Dwarf Fortress is known for its stories, and Legends Mode is how you access those stories. In episode 2 of my Three Cities series, we looked in Legends Mode at the history of Painted Road and we found out some amazing things. So this episode is about how I did that. Now there's more than one way to skin this particular cat, so I'm just going to show you one way, just to keep things simple. First things first, although in theory you can do this on a live game, it has been known to corrupt saves. So you're highly advised to make a backup copy of your current game and then to do all of this on the backup save. I've made a previous video about how to make backup saves of your game, so I'll leave a link for that on the screen. Okay, so we have our copy game. Now my fortress had crumbled, so I'm going to have to go into start playing. You just want to get access to the world that you are playing in. So here is my copy world and I'm going to go into legends mode. It doesn't have to be legends mode, any of the modes would do. Now if you're using a current game and you go to continue playing, that's fine. Just open your game as normal. Right, what we want to do next is to call up the DF hack console. All right, we're going to type in here export legends or one word space all press enter now this takes a little while don't be fooled by the flashing cursor so i'll be back once this is ready to look at okay we're done once you see the df hack and the hash or the pound sign and the flashing cursor then you know it's finished its job right we're done with that and we're done with Dwarf Fortress. We don't need Dwarf Fortress open or even in this particular game to look at Legends mode. Right, go to the Lazy Noob Pack, go to Utilities and we want to open the Legends Viewer. Here we go. Now before we load stuff, I'm just going to organise all of the downloaded data into a folder somewhere. Go to the folder where you keep Dwarf Fortress open the current version and in this top level you'll find a whole bunch of things starting with the region number here we go right i'm gonna throw all of that into a subfolder it doesn't matter where on your system you put a folder with this stuff it doesn't even need to be in your dwarf fortress folders just somewhere where you're going to be able to find it again i'm gonna call this legend stuff and I'm going to call this folder painted road and then I'm going to move all of this exported stuff into that folder there we go right now going into the legends viewer I'm going to click on the three little dots next to legends xml archive and then I'm going to navigate to the folder where I have stored all of that exported stuff. You should have two files available here. And the one that we want is the one that just says Legends, not the one that says Legends Plus. And um, we'll let that load. The Legends Plus in this version doesn't work. I'm currently on DF Hack Release 1. The Legends Viewer has been updated, as has DF Hack Release 2, so that the Legends XML Plus does work in the later version. However, at the time of recording, Release 2 of DF Hack could do with a couple of hot fixes. The difference that this is going to make is we're going to see more things listed as unknown than we would have done if I had XML Plus but it doesn't interfere too much with what we're going to look at. All right, let's start by having a look at what you get on each of the tabs, and then we'll have a little look at the stories that we can find in here. So we start off in summary. So we start on the summary page, and this is the summary of the world and your experience in it. And here you'll find a lot of information about a lot of stuff. And then we have historical figures. Ah, uh, this tells you about all of the people and things and creatures. 
Legends Viewer is Hyperlink Heaven. So you can click on pretty much all the things and get more information from them. It mostly follows a particular pattern where you get a bit of information, the family tree, and then down here, some more information with at the bottom in date order is a list of all of the events that have happened in that creature or person's life. This is particularly useful. Then we have sieves and entities. We can have a look at the current status of that sieve, where they are in the world, who lives there, the battles they've had, and again, a blow by blow history of everything that's happened within that sieve. Then geography has some sub menus. Not all of these are functional. And they don't give us an awful lot of information, but they can tell us who settled there and any kinds of battles that have happened in each of the different regions. Underground will tell us a little bit about the caverns. Land masses, mountains and rivers don't tell us anything at the moment. Then warfare. Warfare has a number of sub menus. It's defaulted to wars. Wars give us the details of where all of the different battles happened and a blow by blow account of what went on in that war. Now, wars are made up of a series of battles, so we can have a look at the individual battles. And then there are specific situations, conquerings. So where a battle resulted in a site being conquered or pillaged. Rampages which are where a beast attacked a particular site and raids. Raids are where usually goblins or kobolds went and stole something. Under other, the only information I've got available to me is a summary of what's happened in the Age of Myth. Then we have arts and crafts and there's a lot of sub menus under here. So dance forms tell us of the different types of dances that are available in the world, musical forms, tell us about the different types of music, poetic forms that tell us about the individual poems. And then there's the artifacts, which tell us where it is and who's held it and if it's had any effect on people. Uh, looks like this one was an artifact that taught the secrets of life and death. Written content. So these are other books. Summary takes us back to the summary of the world. World map takes us to the world map. But we can also load alternative maps. For example, let's have a look at this one. If we open that one, this is the detailed geography of the area. And we can toggle that on or off. We can add overlays such as the battles. Here we can see where all of the hotspots for battling have been going on. And we can toggle that on and off as well. We can toggle the sieves and see where they are. We can see where all the sites are. And hold a cursor over and see who currently lives in that place. But let's toggle all of that off and go back to the standard map. Now, let's see what kind of story we can find. So normally when you're looking for a story, You'd either start with something related to you or maybe a historical figure. We looked at Painted Road in episode two of Three Cities. So maybe this time we'll have a look at Shaken Shot. The camp where the adventurers started. Let's see if we can find out a bit about Shaken Shot. Okay, it's a camp in a jungle. It's mostly dwarves. And there's not a lot of information about it. 
let's see, it's owned by the Ochre Army. That's the government. Part of Solitary Road, we knew that. The Ochre Army, what can we find out about them? Well, all on the same date, we've had a bunch of people who all became a member of the Ochre Armour and during the conquest of Hammerworlds. What do we know about that? Okay, so a group called the Superior Fences attacked Hammerworlds and conquered it. And I guess these are the people who live there then became refugees in the jungle of severity and then those people formed a government called the Oka Armour and set themselves up in a camp. Okay. And let's have a look at this guy here. Oh, Lon Wield Squashed. He died of old age, so that's a, a good thing. He's had a lot of kids. Uh, let's see what we know about him. He started off in Raven New. That's a forest retreat. So that's where he was as soon as he reached the age of 12. He got married. He divorced. He married. He moved to Shield Tattoos. Well, that's a hillock. So at least he's gone to a dwarven place. He's got involved in a whole load of battles against a place called Boat, Boat Diamonds. That's a fort, probably a mercenary fort. Then he's fooled the sieve of the solitary road into believing that he was someone else. And he's gone to a fortress called Class Painted to gather information. Okay. Formed a false friendship with somebody to extract information. Settled back in shield tattoos. He got divorced. That's the second time. Then he's fooled the Puce Unions into believing that he was somebody else. He visited one of their towns to gather information. Got married again. Formed a false friendship in Rapid Spoons. A few times. Then settled in a mountain halls called Earthrack fooled the guild of sharks into believing he was somebody else and then visited oily ransacks the fortress to gather information i wonder why he needs to keep convincing people that he's somebody else what's he doing oh he was involved in the assault of squeezing on painted road that let's see 207 so that was when they took back Painted Rose from the Necromancer. The first Necromancer. All right. Then he got divorced again. Formed a false friendship to get more information. Formed a false friendship with someone else. Oh no, here there's two, they are using each other for information. Formed a false friendship with somebody else. Lots more battles, so he's a bit of a soldier. Formed a false friendship again. Got married again. Oh, okay, he visited Hammer Worlds to gather information, but. A couple of days later, Hammerworlds was attacked and he became a refugee and then became one of the people who formed the Ochre Armour. Well, that was kind of unfortunate and he kind of deserved it, I suppose, because he was just visiting this place. Yeah, and then he got involved in a load more battles before dying of old age. Well, that explains why he had so many children, though. He got married a few times. Four of his children are already dead. Let's have a look at this one. Murdered by a goblin. Oh, she was quite young as well. Oh, she, yeah, not much happened to her. She was abducted 
How old was she? Born in 206. She was abducted when she was 10. Imprisoned in a place called Jackal Sects. Where she became part of them. She got married. Oh, but on the day she was married, she was murdered by a goblin. Wonder what, what's this husband? Aban. Oh, he was also an abductee. He went to Malign Seasons, where he was abducted again and ended up at Jackal Sects, where he was married and divorced, and then he married Kubuk, our dwarf's daughter, before he was murdered. He was murdered by a dwarf called Rigoth ruled chambered the malignant metal contingencies of gladness. That is a name. Now, you get fancy names when you kill a lot of people. What? Who's this? In possession of a legendary artifact. So, what's happened to you? You started off life as an abductee, where you settled in dungeon drilled. You were abducted again, taken to jackal sects, which is where you murdered the husband of our dwarf's daughter. You murdered a dwarf called Tun and got involved in a bit of fighting. You married Maffol and then you moved to an elven dark pit called Throw Seducers formed a false friendship, got involved in a load of battles. You married another dwarf, so I presume something bad must have happened to Maffel. Married a dwarf called Zephon, settled back in jackal sects, divorced Zephon, murdered Zephon, okay, acquired an artifact, had a bunch more battles, you murdered a dwarf called Kib, married and divorced Sarvesh. Did you then murder Sarvesh? No, you murdered someone called Jurist, and then somebody called Aban, and then someone called Sigan, then you married again a dwarf called Atir, and settled in a human town of Rapid Spoons. And you've just divorced a tear. I wonder if you're about to murder him. Hmm. Well, this is a curious, murderous dwarf. You have one child. Well, anyway, that's... We could go down this rabbit hole for hours. That's how you find the stories in Dwarf Fortress. So I hope that's helped you to figure out how to access your own stories. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.